All right, guys, it's been a while. It's been a hot minute, but I've been busy. I'm like, you know, write the bookness. But no matter how responsible you try to be, someone comes along to ruin it all with a whole lot of fun. So um, if I don't get the books that have to be done in time, done in time, um, I blame Chantal Reads All Day. She has a super cool readathon for September. I have been literally drumming my fingers, doing all the things, reading books I shouldn't have been reading because, because it's coming. She's got prompts. She's got fun stuff. She even has merch. Okay, I bought a t-shirt. So she has all these prompts and I even, did you see that opening? Yeah. I even, in waiting for this, did my own bouquet. Of sharpened pencils because how can you do you've got mail without a bouquet of sharpened pencils but I don't have all night because I do have deadlines so I'm going to behave and not chat all night this is really hard and I'm gonna get right into you know three minutes or four minutes whatever this is already in I'm gonna get into um, these prompts I want everyone to laugh with me um, I made pages in my journal my reading journal and I have no idea if I'm getting this out there how do you like my pathetic attempt at drawing Tom Hanks that was fun but so I've got reminders I'll put book covers you know next to the prompts that I did um, once I've done it and I'll color it and make it colorful and pretty but right now this is this is all I've got because I just been sketching because I have time for this yes yes I do so the first prompt is really easy it's send an email. I mean, duh, you've got mail. Let's send an email, right? Well, I just, you know, it's like, how am I going to do this? Because I've got to do it Shatona style, right? You know, we, we got to be ourselves too. And I really thought about it and I decided what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to draw a name from my newsletter list and I'm going to send them, that person, whoever it is, an encouraging email. Because I was like, Hey, these guys send me emails all the time. I get just random emails every day from someone saying, you know, your book encouraged me or when is this book coming out? Or that's encouraging. Trust me. It tells me that you want the books. So even demanding emails and some of them are, and I love them, are so encouraging. Anyway, so the first one is email. That's how I'm going to do it. So take time and send an email. That's prompt number one. Prompt number two is obviously write a letter, right? And so I will be writing a letter to someone, possibly overdue letters to the grandkids, maybe. I don't know who I'm gonna send it to. Maybe I'll send a postcard to Chantal because you know, she likes postcards and she did this. So who knows what I'll do? Um, I suspect it won't be a single letter because I have issues following orders. I like to do things my way, okay? And then the very first reading thing the first one is obviously read one of the shoe books, Noel Stretfield. So I have two options, so I'm going to need help because I don't know which ones. I have other ones in the house, but I couldn't find them. My daughter just sent me these recently, for which I'm grateful. And because otherwise I would have had to have done, right? Shalise, I love you. Um, so Noel Stretfield, I have a choice between white boots, which are shoes, right? Or theater shoes because it says shoes. So please leave a comment when I ask for help and give your opinion on the shoe books. Basically blue or yellow, theater or boots, which are, you know, skating shoes. Um, so I don't know. It could be either one. Um, I think in the U.S. this one's called skating shoes. I think this is the British version. But anywho, Noel Stretfield, read a shoe book. There's that one. Okay, next up is read a book that takes place in a bookstore or a library, okay? And I put bookstore on my thing because I'm doing bookstore. I read a couple of books, actually. This is the one I just finished. Um, the Readers of Broken Wheel Recommend. This is mainstream general market fiction. This is not Christian fiction. I, I wouldn't, I can't recommend it, but I read it. it. has a bookstore in it. And it's also epistolary, just saying. Um, that'll that'll matter in a minute. So 
I also read Authentically Izzy, which I'll mention in rom-com, so I'm not going to go into it, but that has bookstores and library. Um, so there's more, okay? I know I've read more. I just can't remember. So I had to really dig, and then I remembered that I have not yet read The Haunted Bookshop by Christopher Morley, who wrote Parnassus on Wheels, which is an amazing, wonderful story. I haven't read The Haunted Bookshop. My mom said it was good. Not as good as Parnassus, but still very good. So I'm going to, for a book that takes place in a bookstore, I'm going to read The Haunted Bookshop. Um, okay, the next one is to read a Maude Hart Lovelace book. Obviously, she mentions the Betsy Tacey books in the um, movie. I chose not to. I remember reading Betsy Tacey when my kids were little. They were a little bit too young for them. And so I was reading ahead to figure out what I wanted them to read. I didn't, I didn't like them. So I chose one of her books about older kids. And so I have, or older people, I don't think they're kids. So I have Emily of Deep Valley. I know nothing about this book at all. I just found one that wasn't a Betsy Tacey and wasn't them grown up either. So this is... Um, Emily Webster, an orphan living in her, with her grandfather, is not like other girls her age in Deep Valley, Minnesota. After graduation, she longs to join the crowd and walk to college, but she can't leave her grandfather alone at home. So, resigning herself to a lost winter, Emily nonetheless throws herself into a new program of study and growing interest in the local Syrian community. Ooh. And when she meets a handsome new teacher at the high school, Emily gains more than she ever dreamed possible. Da, da, da. Well, okay, so this is a romance. <laughs> but Syrian community, that's kind of cool. Okay, I did not expect that. Next, so she said read Jane Austen, which is obvious. Pride and Prejudice would have been my first choice, but I just read it in July for Jane Austen in July. So I chose Persuasion. Um, I love Persuasion. So I decided it... I don't even know if I've actually read all of this. I know I've started it, but I don't know if I've actually finished it. But I do love the adaptations. I particularly the one, love the one with Amanda Root and Siren Hines. I'm just saying. Um, the other one is very lovely and beautiful, but um, the transformation of Anne in the Amanda Root is so good. Just seeing her go from just sallow and lifeless in her appearance to blooming and vibrant is really beautiful. Anyway, so I'm going to be reading Persuasion. Obviously, there's six or seven books you can choose from if you want. Then we need help again because the next one is to read an epistolary novel. I read Authentically Izzy, which is also an epistolary novel. I've already read it. Guess what? Oh, well, and readers of Broken Wheel recommend there was that one. So I'm telling you, this is really hard because I've been reading and yet... So I kind of bought a few books. I couldn't decide what I wanted to do. So I, I thought, forget it. I want to read them all, apparently. So here they are. And you guys can tell me what to read. Um, one of them, for sure, is Christian fiction. Um, only one of these is Christian fiction. Okay. So there is, I think I'm gonna need my glasses for this because I don't know anything about these books. Anymore, I got, I think, them from Gretchen Louise. Um, she has a whole list of epistolary novels, and I think um, on on Goodreads, and, and she has a blog post. And I think I got all three of these from that. But don't quote me on that, because I could be totally wrong. So the first one is Last Christmas in Paris. So, you know, we are coming up on Christmas time. This might be a good one. And it says, when war pulled them apart, their words brought them together. So, um, Thomas Harding travels to the City of Lights. A packet of cherished letters in hand. Letters that tell the story of love, loss, friendship, and family. And innocent hopes of a generation devastated by war. As he reads the letters one more time, Tom is transported, is transported back to 1914 and the sunlit August day when Edie Elliot waves goodbye to him and her brother, Will, as they head to the Western Front. So, because it says, now decades later, he finds himself once again in Paris, determined to fill a last promise and lay to rest the ghosts of the past. But one final letter is waiting for him. Come on, one letter waiting. So there's that one. Letters from Sky. Okay, so we've got Scotland. I'm just throwing that out there because Scotland. Um, 
I think I got to read from in here. March 1912. So that was World War One, and this one's World War One too. So it says a sweeping story told in letters spanning two continents and two world wars. Ooh, uh, this is a debut novel that captures the indelible indelible ways that people fall in love and celebrates the power of the written word to stir the heart. So March of 1912 and June of 1940, um, we, we learn about Elspeth in 12 and 40, her daughter. At the start of World War II, her daughter has fallen for a pilot in the Royal Air Force. Her mother warns her against seeking love in wartime, an admonition market doesn't understand. Then after a bomb rocks Elspeth's house and letters that were hidden in a wall come raining down, Elspeth disappears. Only a single letter remains as a clue to her whereabouts. As Margaret sets out to discover where her mother has gone, she must also face the truth of what happened to her family long ago. I'm like, ah, I can't decide. I mean, really? Really? Okay. This one, I'm pretty sure is Tyndale. Yes. So this is, with love where, wherever you are, it looks like 1940s to me. So everyone knows that war romances never last. Nurse Helen Eberhardt approaches everything in life with pure determination. After the attack on Pearl Harbor, she decides to enlist as an RV nurse. There, her grit is put to the test when she's assigned to care for the broken bodies of some of the most severely wounded soldiers, many no older than her own beloved brothers. There's a whole whirlwind romance and wedding. Frank and Helen are sent to the front lines of Europe with only letters to connect them for months at a time. So, obviously, there's... I, I skipped a paragraph. So, there's obviously some romance and then... Um, ooh, and then we get to see them serving in the war as a married couple, but in different places. But the back, they just said, based on an incredible true love story with love wherever you are, takes readers from the home front to the European theater on a sweeping journey of the battle for love to survive against all odds. So those are my three options. We can do red, blue, white, I suppose, but well, it's not really, it's kind of hard to tell that that one's red. So anyway, um, Last Christmas in Paris, Letters from Sky, or With Love Wherever You Are. I find it really interesting that all three of these are place-oriented, wherever you are, Island of Sky, Paris. I thought that was interesting. All Europe, too. Interesting. So anywho, there are those options. Just saying. Um, the next one is to read a rom-com that makes total sense i just finished authentically izzy which is a rom-com and it's awesome and you should read it when it comes out just saying just just throwing that out there um okay so the next one is rom-com so for rom-com i have been holding on to this book forever i chatted with bethany turner and we we get we you know kind of did a little am i gonna like it am i not and she guessed i wouldn't like this one i love her um, The Wooing of Katie McCaffrey. I thought that was a wonderful, wonderful book. And it's a rom-com. And it's a rom-com about rom-coms. So, I mean, if you really want to go double. By the way, You've Got Mail is referenced in there. The, the daisies are on the cover. Just throwing that out there. So, that's an option. I'm going to read Plot Twist because it's a rom-com. It's about books and movies and stuffness. I don't think it's mostly books. I think it's mostly movies. But still, it's plots because books and stuffness. And you've got mail and, you know. So I'm going to read this one for my rom-com. And I'm going to find out if um, Bethany Turner is right. She says she doesn't think I'll like it. I think she's wrong. I think I'm going to love it. Just saying. So that's, that's a thing. That's a thing. The last book prompt is number 10. And it is... <laughs> I gotta show you. It's really bad. So I tried to sketch Tom Hanks because you're supposed to read a Tom Hanks-ish book. So here's <laughs> my pathetic attempt at trying to sketch Tom Hanks. I'm so bad. I'm just so bad. <laughs> Nobody should allow me near a pencil. So that was really hard. And then I found out that Tom Hanks will be playing The old man Uba in A Man Called Uba. Now, I have not read this. My mom just finished it. She loved it. My daughter loved it. I think Chantal loves it. Um, so this is a very beloved book. I'm having a really hard time imagining Tom Hanks being old enough to play a grumpy old man. But I think he's going to be brilliant. I'm just saying. 
And so I'm really, really excited to read this book. This is my choice for um, a Tom Hanks-ish book. I'm calling it Ish because he will be playing the character in the movie. Yeah, it's a stretch, but what can I say? Those are what I'm doing, um, but I do need help with both the epistolary and the shoe book. Which one am I going to choose? Please help me. I need to know. Save me. I'm probably going to put it on Instagram too, being like, help me decide. But really, guys, I want to know what do you think I should read? And then um, prompt number 11 is kind of obvious. Watch You've Got Mail. I'm going to be watching it and I'm going to be watching it. Um, I wanted to like do it while I was doing stuff tonight. And I was like, no, because I've actually created a theme that every time I finish something, I get to do one of the prompts, which will like encourage me to work really fast on stuff that has to get done so that I can do some of the stuff I want to get done. So I'm like excited about that. I have a bonus. Not everybody wants to read books that aren't Christian fiction. So they, they may not want to read some of the ones that I read. Almost all the books I read are Christian fiction, but obviously I've got a couple on here that aren't. Uh, I just finished one that wasn't, you know, now and then I don't. So I thought it might be fun if I came up with, I will need my glasses. Um, if I came up with if you wanted to read my books and or I will throw in some other suggestions um, for books that you might that might fill prompts and whatnot. If you want Christian fiction and or my fiction, here are some options. A shoe book. Huh? That's going to be kind of hard because um, there's supposed to be Noel Stretfield books. But I decided to go with books that are um, either shoe fits somewhere into the storyline or whatever from mine and I have nothing for anyone else sorry I'm sure I've read books where people were like obsessed with shoes and have tons and tons of shoes I'm oh I do have one okay I'll get to that in a second um first book shoe book um I'm gonna say the Hartfield mysteries because she always has really great shoes and she's very into wearing very high quality shoes so that she can walk around in dress shoes without her feet hurting. So that's a thing. Or if you want to take it in the opposite direction, you can go with uh, the stars of New Cheltenham where there's a whole shoe scene that is pretty funny. So I'm just saying, or you could go with like classic fairy tale Cinderella ishness and do the last gasp where uh, the last gasp is Cinderella in the 1920s as a mystery. So there is that option. If you want another author's, the only thing I could think of was Perfectly Arranged by Liana George. She, that she gets hired to organize this woman's shoe closet or room. I think it's a shoe room. This woman has a lot of shoes. So there is that one. The next one is set in a bookstore or library. I got... I got you covered. So um, there is, there's spines and leaves, obviously the book strings where Milton's, what he does is save bookstores. So there's spines and leaves or Heart of Noel. Those are both written and done. Or if you're doing this later after November, there will be Twice Soul Tales, which is the first full length book strings novel. It takes place in Red Wing, Minnesota. And it's going to be a whole lot of fun. I'm loving the story so much. I'm just having a blast with it. So the book string series, obviously there's books. And then Matchmakers of Holly Circle has a library because the main character is a librarian and she gets caught singing hymns in the library and it doesn't go over very well. Um, so just saying. So there is that one. Also, like I said, the bookshop of Lost Secrets or something like that by Molly Rushmeyer. There's Authentically Izzy. Um... Um, the Printed Letter Bookshop, Secrets of Paper and Ink. Printed Letter Bookshop is Catherine Ray. Secrets of Paper and Ink is uh, Lindsay Harrell. So there are lots and lots. Uh, authentically, Izzy is Pepper Basham. So there are lots of bookstore options. I'm, they're, they're all over the place. I could probably go on forever, so I won't. Um, Mod Heart Lovelace. This is hard. Um, my books, the only thing I could come up with close enough with impish, fun little kids who kind of get in trouble. We have Ready or Not. 
I'm really stretching this, guys. Or um, pass forward because it just feels like maybe, just maybe. But I don't know why. I just put it on there because I don't know why. Because really, Mod Heart Love Place, I, I know. So I, mm, I've only read a couple of books and I didn't even like them. So yeah. Um, as far as other Christian fiction authors, though, I would say the Mandy books by Lois Shepard, I think it is. But I would say that would be a much, I would much prefer that myself. I enjoyed those. Um, so that's for My Heart Lovelace. Jane Austen. Um, got lots of options for this. But for my books, um, Charming Miss Dashwood, which is in the A Very Austen Romance. It is my, what, basically Margaret Dashwood's story. You know, Margaret grows up what what might have happened with her and I took liberties with it I combined both the character that Jane Austen wrote and the character that Emma Thompson's movie portrayed I if she were grown up because I really loved what they did with Margaret in that so there is that um in the book Ma um, Margaret and Marianne are actually quite a lot alike so I, I I had her grow up and be more of a combination of them I thought that was fun or I have a Regency novel, Allard Niche, which is spelled Allard Rednick, Cinderella backwards. Um, but if they can do Sinjin for St. John and Beecham for Beauchamp, I can do Allard Niche for Cinderella backwards. Anyway, there's those. But if I could, if I could convince people to read one Austin-esque book that is Christian fiction, I consider her books to be Christian fiction. If you've ever read her prayers, you know her faith was real. But Aside from that, if you want Christian fiction that is Austin-esque to the core, um, I'm going to say Barbara Cornthwaite's um, George Knightley Esquire series. It's Charity, Envy, It's Not, and Lend Me Leave. Two books to tell the whole story of Emma from Knightley's perspective. You find out why nightly cares for Emma, what he sees in her, because I couldn't figure it out until I read those books. And then I saw her through his eyes and whoa, she did a brilliant job. Barbara Cornthwaite is awesome. Also, she has brought to book for books in a bookstore. It's a mystery in a bookstore and it's amazing and you will love it. So there's that. She also has much to do about persuasion. She just came out with this year and it is brilliant. So I'm just throwing that out there. Um, epistolary, I got lots of options. So I have Penelope's Pursuit. There's a letter before every chapter. Jack has a couple of letters in it. It's, it's thin. I'm just skating on thin ice with that one. But I put it in there because there are letters. Then there is Dead Letter, one of the Madeline Madelines. I think it's number four. I think. I'm pretty sure it's number four. Um, Finding a Memory. They're not letters. It's a journal. But technically, epistolary can include journal stuff. So I, I put that on there. And then Snowcrossed Letters is all about mismatched mail delivery, fun stuffness. So there is that. Now, Christian fiction epistolary. Whew. I'm going to say if you can only read one book that is epistolary in Christian fiction, I'm going to say Things We Didn't Say by Amy Lynn Green. That book... Another book in a bookstore, The Words Between Us, Aaron Bartles. Anyway, so I'm only giving that one for epistolary, though, because that book is just so good. No, I'm lying. I'm lying because Catherine Ray's Dear Mr. Knightley, it's Daddy Long Legs, which is another good epistolary. But it's that plus Emma in one. So you could technically use that to fill two prompts. I'm just throwing that out there. Um, so then we have rom-com. I have a few of those. Dial W for Wrangler is technically a rom-com. So it's a radio host who does dial a trade and you can sell your stuff, but she tends to do um, relationship advice that her boss doesn't like. And one guy keeps selling stuff left and right to try to figure out how to get past this inexplicable, uncharacteristic shyness around his office manager. So there's that one. Random Acts of Shyness. That one's definitely a whole lot of fun. A uh, guy who 
his his coping mechanism when he's feeling awkward is to talk about random facts. I should have called it random facts of shyness. I totally blew that. Trat. Anywho, but he talks about random animal facts. The life cycle of a dung beetle or the mating habits of chimps or mammals and their bladders. It was inspired by a true story. That's all I'm saying. Um, the 12 Dates of Christmas. That's a friends to more thing where, yeah, it's just, if it could go wrong, it did. It's a lot of fun. 31 Kisses is a, I can't even explain it, but if, if you love quirky characters, Chessie is definitely a quirky character and I love her. Snow Cross Letters, which I've already mentioned, um, that's definitely rom-com. Or if you want something a little more seasoned, I have a seasoned romance for people who are a little older, uh, wrong about Mr. Wright. That's kind of rom com ish It's it's on the border. It's kind of funny and kind of not. Kind of is, kind of not. So, And then Tom Hanks. Because Tom Hanks. I don't know what to do. I, I am unable to can. I have... I, what I did is I went through my books, shook my head a lot shook it a whole lot actually and finally said okay so in what books would I want Tom Hanks at some age or another to play my character that was the best I could come up with so Argosy Junction I'm gonna say Matt a younger Tom Hanks could have played Matt pretty well um he was a little scrawny back then for Matt but it would have worked um Operation Post Haste the teacher yeah, Tom Hanks could have totally pulled that off. So, Operation Post Haste. Um, Dial I for Identity, which is coming out next month. So, only for later. But that one, I'm going to say a young Tom Hanks could have played him. But probably the best. I'm going to say Matchmakers of Holly Circle again. Because I think Richard Stevens across the street. Um... Yeah, Tom Hanks would have played a really, really, really good um, Richard Stevens. For other authors, the only thing I could come up with, I think a young Tom Hanks would have been a brilliant Titus for Pepper Basham's Jane by the Book. Those are the prompts. Those are what I'm doing. I need all the help with all the bookness. Um, so please leave your comments below and tell me, are you going to do some of this? You don't have to do all the prompts. You only have to do one to participate. And one of those prompts is share on Instagram. I'm just saying. Uh, that was number nine. Didn't, didn't mention that. But that was number nine. Share it on Instagram, what you're going to do. And I'm going to be doing that. So it's a thing. So I hope you'll join us. I think this is going to be a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, tell me what you're going to read. I'm kind of excited. All right, guys, here are my prompts. I've already done the share on Instagram. I'll probably share again, but I can't wait.